The music industry in Australia has always survived in a spirit of entrepreneurship and risk without the benefit of any real government assistance, uh, much less any significant protection from copyright theft. Uh, we're the rock and roll industry, goddammit, and we're proud to go it alone. But I think these are the two things we have to consider going forward, support and protection. On the support side, I think it's finally time to say that we need to see a serious injection of funds from the federal government into the costs of recording and exporting music, just as there are very generous funding arrangements and tax breaks in place for Australian film. Uh, yes, there are existing grants and programs which assist touring artists and other worthwhile initiatives, but nothing like the level of meaningful support that we've seen in countries such as the UK, Canada and New Zealand. Interestingly, uh, some of these governments view the music industry as an industry and seek to develop initiatives that help build and strengthen the work of that industry. In Australia, for better or worse, we lumped in as a poor cousin of the arts, and as we all know, the bulk of arts funding money in this country goes to symphony orchestras, opera, theatre and film. The Arts Council support lots of worthwhile things at a grassroots level, and I certainly don't mean to insult the good work they do, but there's no coherent policy for promoting and growing contemporary Australian music. Australian contemporary music means so much to millions of young Australians. It's respected all over the world. We're an industry that employs an enormous number of people. So why is it, do you think, that our industry is almost completely ignored by the federal government and both major political parties? If either of the major parties want to look at into why they're losing touch with young people, then look no further. We need to look at a better model for government-funded radio as well. Triple J is obviously tremendously important. Indeed, the station provides a vital proving ground for younger artists. But there are so many acts, particularly older artists, who no longer fit the narrow confines of the Triple J playlist. Uh, there is a huge constituency of listeners over 40 who are too old for the Js, but who are entirely dissatisfied by the mindless repetition of so-called classic rock formats. There is so much great music being made today by adults for adults. In the, in the UK we have Radio 2 and in the US there is a proliferation of adult alternative and heritage formats. But in Australia, sadly, we have nothing. It's as if we don't exist. And on the protection side, with the rollout of the National Broadband Network, which aims, well, I, th I believe the uh, Labor government's uh, finally got power, so I, I expect we will see the rollout of the National Broadband Network, uh, which aims to bring fast broadband access to over 90% of Australian homes and businesses. Music and other content industries are poised to play an even greater role in Australia's productivity as they generate the new entertainment and information products that will help drive demand for greater digital capacity. The potential for growing content industries in partnership with media and broadcasting organisations in this new NBN-enabled economy is significant. However, there are some appreciable threats to innovation, investment and new business models in the online context. File sharing and illegal downloading and other forms of copyright theft are clearly a threat to the development of a vibrant creative economy. Governments in the United Kingdom, France and New Zealand and South Korea have adopted a range of measures to discourage this illegal activity and encourage consumers to access legitimate online content. There is a growing momentum for the implementation of a graduated response policy that would see infringing consumers issued with a series of warnings. This is not about, issue, about suing consumers, clearly. It's about firstly pointing out that they've infringed copyright and then if they continue issuing an escalating series of warnings and sanctions that may include a throttling of bandwidth or fines or even suspension of their internet service. The music industry and Ireland's largest ISP, Aircom, have implemented a negotiated outcome uh, for a graduated response to illegal file sharing. Already some of these measures are seemingly paying dividends the strengthening of the legal environment in Sweden in 2009 combined with the launch of Spotify led to a doubling of digital music revenues in 2009. Against a backdrop of largely declining sales across Europe, this was no small feat. So we're aware of the view that a graduated response solution to address illegal file sharing that is convenient, affordable and equitable will support business and investment confidence to ensure that the NBN is richly populated with creative content. This will also fuel the potential for ISPs to become a key distribution point for new content, at the same time as reducing customer churn and internalising revenues from growth in demand for digital content on their networks.